Okay, next up in 5.5a, we're going to do another much more complicated revolve for this automoblox axle. Now, when I reverse engineered this, um, I did it with either, you know, some cylinders, whereas we're going to do this cross section and revolve it. This probably is more difficult, but it can teach us some things. So, new part file. Start 2D sketch just to match the drawing. I'm going to use the YZ. Don't have to do that, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to draw this shape here with a bunch of lines, getting them fairly close, being careful to watch out for little ant trails. Like this, 0.19 matches this side, but then this one does not match this one. So we just need to be careful that it doesn't add some constraints that we don't want. So let's rough out the shape. I'm going to start at the origin. You go up. You might want to, you know, pay attention to how much you go up and over at first so that you don't draw it way too small or way too big. But we can fix that if we need to. We'll work around that issue. So this horizontal line does not come all the way back. Goes up, goes over comes down not to the same exact spots a little bigger so I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid these this auto constraint thing is gonna come about here now I'm actually going to stop there and then work the other way because we have one diagonal line that we want to avoid now this line here actually does line up so you might want to follow that we need to come up. This one actually does two. We need to go out. We need to go up again. This one lines up as well. Of course, when we dimension it, that might go away. Come out. Come up a little bit. This one does not line up. So it actually lines up with this. Comes over, and then it comes down just a little bit. I'm going to come down farther just to avoid. See, now we're at the midpoint. I'm going to try to avoid all ant trails. And then this comes up at an angle and connects here. So that's the rough sketch. Now we go back in and what I'm going to try to do, even though we are given diameters, because that's what you would most likely measure, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to get all the dimensions, including those, even though we're going to cut them in half in the same general spot as my drawing so that it's easier to tell if I've got them all. So, I'm going to start with those heights. Now whether you start at the bottom, so this one, or whether you start with the overall height may depend on if you drew it too big or too small. If things get out of whack, we have a way around that. So this one is a full diameter of 0.19 so I'm just going to type in 0.19 divided by 2 to get that radius. And luckily, everything just shrunk with it. Now, if I would have done, let's see what happens if I would have done this instead. So let's try to undo that, too. This entire height is out on this side. This is 0 0.2, 0 0.4 divided by 2. It just shrinks everything, too. So either way, should be good. But if you're not, if we have an issue, like you might have, hopefully we do so I can show you how to work with that. This time I kept everything to scale. So this is that 0.19 divided by 2. Now we're getting a little crazy. Uh, let's, this one is 0.25 divided by 2. This entire height is... 0.29 divided by 2. And now we go to the other side. This one is also 0.19 divided by 2. Everything's working out for us so far. I'm going to get out of here just to move this to a better spot. This one here is 0.25 divided by 2, straight across from the other side, straight across from this one. We could also use a collinear constraint if we wanted to. 
this one here is that 0.3 divided by 2. And then we also have this one here. So just clicked on the end of the line. Make sure you click on the end of the line, not the line itself. This is 0.01. And then to make sure that this is straight, this dot actually needs to be straight across from this line. So you can either dimension from here down to here and make sure it's 0.01. You could dimension from here to here and actually make it zero. Or you could dimension from here down to here and make it 0.15 as well. Whatever you want to do to make this straight across from there. Now we need to do side to side. So I'm just going to start. And again, we keep a track down here. We got eight dimensions needed still. This one is 0.07. This one here is kind of tricky with the drawing. 0.33. They dimension this line here, 0 0.05. Now another dimension that we have is the overall. That is 0.88. Makes things look a little goofy. This one here is 0.05. Getting kind of messy here. From here to here, there's 0.25. And then from here to here is 0.19. Getting closer. This line is actually directly below this one, so I'm going to do a collinear constraint. Now we're down to fully constrained. Just to make sure, I'm going to kind of rearrange some of my dimensions. They have these three lined up. Pretty well. This is a disaster zone here. Okay, now, finished sketch. Unlike the last one, we're going to revolve around an actual part. There's no hole through the middle. And so we do revolve. It already has pre-selected our profile. It's already gone down to the axis selection. And that's what we want to rotate around. And we want a full rotation. We hit OK. So we've got everything but these little cutouts here that allow it to kind of squeeze and snap into place you put the wheel on. So for that, the easiest way I think is to do a 2D sketch on this end and extrude a rectangle back into it. So I'm going to do a center point rectangle, two point center, start in the middle, and I'm just going to make it extra tall. And the width according to our drawing is 0.04. Finish sketch. I'm going to extrude not sure why it added this extra circle here. If this were a loft, it might be a problem. I'm going to cut. And we're going to cut a distance of 0.2. Okay, so there we have that. Now, if we did this right, we should have a total surface area of 1.616 inches squared. So let's go into our eye properties. Click on physical, click on update, 1.616. File, save as. 5.5a. And let's call this 5.5a. Just call it Axel with your initials. Call it good. 